Crafters, it's Sarah with Craft Test Dummies, and I am here with Ed Roth and his line of stencils, Stencil One, and he is paired with Plaid to show us some pretty amazing things. How's it going, Ed? It's going great. Great. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. What are you going to show us today? I'm going to show you my new line with Plaid. So, my company, Stencil One, like you said, and I've released like 20 new designs with Plaid, and I've designed these specifically to show people how to layer, um, get this nice, rich, uh, deeper feeling to your work so this uh, stencil here is a three layer stencil that we're going to use so I love when there's a pattern behind an iconic image and so that's our three layers it's pattern then your silhouette of your bird in this case and then the bird's detail and there's a lot of other stencils designed the same way of um, layer 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 awesome and I love pattern so that's what we'll start with Great. Yeah. So step one, place your pattern on, uh, in this case we're painting these cool wood blocks, um, and I'm just going to hold it in place while I do it. And this is a quatrefoil design. And my number one tip for stenciling that I say all day is, it's a dry brush technique. Very little paint on your brush. So you dry it off on the side of the plate. We're so used to dipping into the paint mm -hmm. and painting. But in this case, dry is better. You could start anywhere. And sort of brushing inward to get that crisp edge on your stencil. Brush yeah. inward. Brush inward. You can swirl like this. And it's up to you if you want to fully fill in every part of the stencil or do you want to go sort of even drier and make it look distressed? Mm -hmm. um, kind of lends itself in this case with a quatrefoil, it would almost take on a Moroccan look or something. But um, yeah, you just keep going back, but don't get impatient, just take a bit off your brush again, fill it in. And these are, the paints I'm using today are the multi-surface folk art paints. So you can also do this project with the same paint on concrete, wood, um, t-shirts, metal, glass. <laughs> it's nice to have uh, one and all paint at your hands, so uh, I love them. We don't have much space in Brooklyn, so I like to have a one and all paint. Yeah. So just keep filling it in here. And these paints dry very fast, and that's fun for our layering project. So if you go thin enough, by the time I lift this stencil a little, be ready for the next layer. Yeah. So how many different sets of stencils do you have in your collection right now? Well, this new line with plaid is about 20 designs, and they range from, you know, animals to hipster bicycles to uh, patterns. I can never settle on one thing, so we really did an eclectic mix of stuff. Very cool. And then on my site, stencil1.com, you'll see I have hundreds of designs, from seven-foot grizzly bears down to two-inch little leaves, so I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah. um, I love painting on wood and leaving some of the the wood look exposed. It just seems kind of modern. Almost done here. And I recommend using a stencil brush like we're using today. It's you know, they're very affordable. I don't like the foam brushes as much as... Mm -hmm. There's a little more control with these bristle brush brushes. Ah. I think I'm filled in. Here and there. And that's, voila! Voila! Oh, I'm going to add a little on this side. What's nice is you just line it back up. If you missed anything, I forgot to do this edge. Oh. 
So it looks like you cut this out of a larger mm -hmm. pattern. I like I like how it bleeds off the edge. There you awesome. go. Awesome. Cool. All right, then uh, it looks really dry already. And just for our sake, I'm gonna dry it off. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> okay, the next layer is the silhouette of the bird, as you see here. So it's in this aqua color. And put them where you want them to fly. Take a new brush for the color. And again, you can brush inward to get the crisp edge of the stencil. You could go a little heavier over the last pattern you did just to cover it. Right. I brush inward a lot just to get that edge. And when you're picking your colors, since the third layer we'll do is the detail, mm -hmm. you just want to choose, uh, this color should be lighter than your last color. So, otherwise it looks like a, a negative. You might want to do that, but uh, you really want to make it look more realistic. Right. Last color, darkest. covered and that's your next layer awesome I went a little heavy so I'm gonna dry it Go right ahead. okay <laughs> next step the detail of the bird you line it up over your silhouette that you just painted and then I'm gonna take this dark rich blue just put in all the detail and I test over here I mm -hmm. get it out a little drier which is nice when you have an open area yes and then you can go up and down some people I like to kind of swirl it into the open areas you don't want to go too heavy or you'll have a blurry faced bird And then you can even keep a little pool of paint right here. Wiggle it in here. So it doesn't take a lot of paint. Yesterday I did about 50 of these with one jar of paint. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And you can brush in a little in the longer parts and get all the shapes filled in. Did you make a take start at 10? Like your sign says? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ed, for doing the video for us craft test dummies. We appreciate it, and we hope to see you at many more CHAs. Thank I you. Hope so too. Thank you.